Jason Camisa, that is Johnny Lieberman, and we are senior features editors at Motor Trend. And that is Randy Post. And he's gonna help us figure out the 2016 Motor Trend best driver's car. Let's take a look at the contenders. Last year's champion, the AMG GTS. The all new Jaguar F-Type SVR, the most powerful Jaguar ever. Here's your favorite car in the whole world, the Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. I love you. <laughs> and the Porsche 911 Carrera S in amazing blue. Speaking of amazing colors, the McLaren 570S. Speaking of mid-engine supercars, the Audi R8 V10 Plus. And still speaking of mid-engine supercars, the all-new Acura NSX. But who needs a mid-engine supercar when you have a Chevy Camaro 1LE? Who wants that when you can have the Nissan GTR? Oh my God, Zilla! So many choices, including BMW M4 GTS. Or the Shelby GT350R. <laughs> Which won't be as fast as the Dodge Viper ACR because that is the fastest car around any track ever. Including this one. Except for maybe this thing. Oh yeah, the all new uh, Mazda CX-0. Yeah, you know what I love about it? Mm. Unassisted steering. No turbo lag. No turbo lag. It's just wonderful, pure experience. <laughs> Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Jason. How you doing? Until I finish this, I really can't say. What? Just another day at Motor Trend with $1.8 million worth of best driver's car contenders. Well, forget about the money. Think about the power. Mm. We have 6,484 horsepower. The average car here makes 540 horsepower. The average. Well, it's a good thing we have those cops to shut down the road. That's right. Close course, professional idiots. Speaking of sanctioned stupidity, yeah. Viper Wing. I know. I love this thing. In fact, I think all cars should kind of start out with a wing this size and then get bigger. Huh? Yeah. You're a four-year-old. I just said I was an idiot. So you're a four-year-old idiot. Huh? All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 I just got my annual proctology exam. Oh, God. Well, uh, you know, if Best Driver's Car were only about the racetrack, this would be the winner. If it's only about lap times, we know this is gonna destroy the entire field. In fact, this is the production car record holder at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. However, Best Driver's Car is about more than that. It's about how a car is on the road. So, you ready? <laughs> Punch it! Turn it in! <laughs> <laughs> I also like, you know, everything that's been said about a Viper has been said, except for this. I think the pressure <laughs> level is different year to year. I think like this year is popping and this one's like inflating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just almost hit my head. You know, what I love about this car though is the original Vipers were were terrible, they were scary. This thing isn't. It's scary until you actually get to its limits, and then it's a really easy car to drive. It just, you never think it's gonna be easy. You're really just scared. And there's something to be said for that. A car like this should frighten you a bit. I think what you said is they bred all the fear out of the Viper with the ACR. What? They, they defanged <laughs> de it a little bit. They did. I mean, this really is a race car for the street, though. This is not the kind of car I'd wanna spend well, I don't even want to get in it after, I, I think I have a bruise. Um, <laughs> you know, they burn you, it smells, it's loud, it sounds like garbage truck. Oh, yeah, but it, I mean, it, it is warm in here. As it, yeah, right, and it's only 70 degrees outside. I, you know. What's crazy to me is, that they've set every record in the universe with this car, it's so impressive right now, and it's going out of production in like six months. Yeah. Like, you know, I never thought I would get an opportunity to find out what it's really like to ride a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I know, they should, they should stick this thing in the Ark at the Creation Museum. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out, oh, that sound. I gotta get out, somebody get me out of here! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's uh, park this dinosaur yeah. and uh, hop into those two uh, Robotechs over yeah, there. Get me out of here, please. All right, okay. All right, come on, we're up, we're up. Duh. Come on. <laughs> Ow, that's hot. Oh, I'm schwitzing. Five minutes in this car and we're complaining. <laughs> I think that means we're getting old. Hey, look yeah. at these two. Look. And you know, look at that car in white. Mm. Acura's 
press colors were blue and black, and it just looks so much better in white. It's gorgeous. It's got like pewter in it. Yeah, it's a great color. You know what's really cool? Do you remember back in the mid 90s when Japan kind of ruled the world and every sports car they made had like all these superpowers like all wheel drive, turbocharged, four wheel steering, and yeah. bam, Japan is back. Ish. Huh? That's really American. I mean, it was designed by Americans, it was engineered by Americans, built in America. All right, fair enough, fair and enough. Interestingly enough, this Japan's time. Japan's halfback. <laughs> Japan's halfback. <laughs> and this time, America makes Japan look big and fat. That thing looks like a Murano. Yeah, huge. <laughs> it's the same color, too. No, what's crazy to me, though, is that as big as the Nissan looks, it's only about 50 pounds heavier than that. That's because the future of lightweighting is heavy batteries and motors. Fair enough. All right, let's drop. <laughs> came out, it was what, eight, nine, ten years ago, it was a complete spaceship. The twin turbo V6 when everything else had a V8, and a four-wheel drive and a twin clutch. Now it's just, you know, getting a little old. Yeah, twin turbo V6, I mean, this has that, plus three other motors. Plus, my dual clutch has three more gears than you. And yet, your NSX is no faster in a straight line. Okay, Mr. Numbers Don't Matter, who cares about straight line? The NSX has always been about how it feels. All right. So how does your laptop feel? Really good. Shockingly good, actually. Well, I've always said that there's no car that's faster down any given stretch of road than the GTR. So let's find out if you can keep up with me. I'm currently packed on your back bumper. Not for long. <laughs> oh, he's fast. game is faster than your video game, la la la. Well, uh, I think the risk-reward ratio out here is a little bit high. Maybe this is one we could uh, settle on the track. Yeah, probably a good idea given the 500-foot cliffs on either side of these roads. But I gotta ask, is there a happy medium between, like, Tyrannosaurus Rex Viper and, you know, these Transformers? Oh, I think there is. Ah. Let's take the McLaren. Thing drives like a million bucks. The McLaren, this thing's basically a hypercar. Plus, it, it looks like Lady Gaga's pumpkin. Let's take the Audi. What's medium about the Audi? It's naturally aspirated. Yeah, naturally aspirated V10 that's mounted in the middle with computer-controlled all-wheel drive and a dual clutch. That, I think, just means we need to take my baby, the Aston Martin. The Aston is just a weird British knockoff of the Viper. <gasps> You're an evil man, and you're wrong. Although it does kind of look like it's been kissing the McLaren. Mm. And I think we're out of options, so we yeah. might keep it British. Hey, hey, the Jaguar SVR, that's a happy medium. Is it absolutely necessary for, oh my God, for you to hit every speed enhancing thing? Jesus, the last thing this thing needed was more power. 100 miles an hour. My God. <laughs> Whatever happened to British restraint? Brexit! <laughs> I mean, this is an animal. Say what you want about it. It's uh, an animal! <laughs> but wow, the very last thing this car needed was more power. <laughs> I'm gonna disagree, but this is the SVR and it does have more power. Uh, taking the knowledge they gained from the Project 7, this now, instead of 550, makes 575 horsepower. Thank God. Fork is up from 502 to 516. Thank God. The all-wheel drive software has been revised. The arrows revised. The suspension has been changed. And yet, it drives exactly the same. <laughs> uh, actually, I think it's a little bit worse. <laughs> but boy, is it fun every time you turn into a corner. Now, because of the softer rear roll bar, the back heaves over, and then, it changes toe. It just goes into a drift in a straight line. What that's was that? Ex that's exacerbated by the stiffer front sway bar. Oh, God. So, <laughs> it's just crazy. But yeah, they built a GTR like without the steering and confidence. So <laughs> it's, it's incredibly violent Great. and crazy. And uh, loud. Yeah. So, you know, actually, that's one of the cooler revisions for the SVR. On the regular R, it's one exhaust pipe that splits into two. This is actually two pipes back from the headers, and they made the pipe thinner. You know how thick it is? 0.6 millimeters. But it's not the loudest car here. Huh? 
Johnny. Yes. What the hell are you doing? I'm adding distilled water to the water tank. What? It's got water injection, so it adds 50 horsepower for a buck. Oh my god. Is there a fluid on planet Earth that car doesn't consume? Urine. Oh. Well, I guess, yeah, it's not a diesel. But uh, you've already lost the race. Oh, just hold your horse. Ah, hold your let's horse. Go. Arr. Beautiful car. I mean, I always thought the M4 was great looking, and whatever they did to the GTS, lowered it, winged it, oranged it, it all just looks good. And I gotta say, that Shelby, it's no slouch in the aesthetics department either. Yeah, but you know what's funny? That both of these are based on cars that we've criticized in the past for not being great driver's cars. Well said. I mean, look, the new Camaro SS is a better driver's car than the BMW M4 or the Mustang GT. Yeah, and yet this thing, I got a big smile on my face. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm smiling too, man. I mean, the M4 GTS is incredible. The uh, headline story of this car is, of course, the water tank because you can squirt water into the intake plenum and adds 50 more horsepower, which is awesome. But uh, the real story of this car, I think, is the revised front suspension. We've criticized, rightly, the M4 for not being that great handling. This thing is incredible. It also has downforce now because of the splitter and the wing, and it's just a magic car. And looking at how that thing is heaving around over all those bumps, I can tell it rides really stiff, which is something this thing doesn't because it has magneto rheological shocks, which is like unbelievable at this price point, and a 5.2 liter flat plane crankshaft V8. This is like Ferrari engine building kind of stuff and 526 horsepower. This is nuts. Yeah, I mean, I think all these cars are a little bit too much for this road. Yeah, I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna say racetrack stat. Johnny, I just did stuff I haven't done since college. I mean, I, I think what we're learning here is that as a group, these cars are too fast for public roads. Closed public roads! It's insane. Yeah. Closed public roads, by the way, that are too fast for an AMG. They killed it. <laughs> yeah, well, last year's winter, and now the king is dead, and it died from a busted power steering pump. <laughs> and, by the way, we're talking about a 911 Carrera, not a turbo, and a Camaro. Yeah, yeah. Not a Corvette, a Camaro. Oh, it's crazy. So I think we need to take all these guys to a racetrack. Ah. Call Randy Popst. Hey, Randy! Man, he's fast. boys, thinking you need 500 plus horsepower and a closed mountain road to have some fun? You don't need either. I'm at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, preparing to lap all those high performance cars and doing it in a real race car, the Mazda Miata. Some macho lunkheads give the Miata a hard time, but that small size and light weight makes it a great race car and the most race car in history. In a typical spec Miata race, there'll be 50 to 100 cars on track. And what you need is situational awareness. You've got to be constantly alert to everything going on around you, or it can be very dangerous. What is 
wrong with you? Because the are, Charizard, like, right there. Your, your brain is charred. You're 41 years old. Hey, there's a blue snake right on the Miata. If he takes this long to get out of all these 12 cars he's got a lap, we're gonna be here for six months. And you're gonna be completely gray by then. Ouch. You know, sometimes I don't really want to be your friend anymore. Ow, that hurts. Seriously, I think we need to call for wheelchair assistance. This is getting ridiculous. Hey, guys. You know, Randy, I've been thinking. I don't think I can be your friend. What? I thought we were like this. What? what I do? You are paid to drive really fast cars, and I like fun cars. And I've decided that most cars that are really fast aren't fun, like the Viper. Except for maybe the Mazda Miata. I love that. It's both. Jason, the Miata's not fast. Really? Tell that to all the guys in Ferraris on racetracks getting passed on both sides by Miata. Boys, all boys, the time. boys, you're friends. Let's get along. We have a lot of work to do here. We have 12 cars, some of which are potentially both fast and fun, and the one that we like the best, we're gonna call the 2016 best driver's car. Let's fill this board up. Sweet. Bye, buddy. We're still friends. This engine just revs and revs and revs. The grip is good and the balance is good. I'm actually driven a couple of nervous oversteering cars and this is kind of a nice change. I like the way the car handles a lot. It's got a fair amount of understeer, surprisingly. A mid-corner understeer, which makes it nice and stable. Can't leave that wave forward too long. Nissan GTR, an updated model. The all-wheel drive does an incredible job of putting the power to the ground. It is softer than it was. I noticed more roll. This car is built for the racetrack. Man, that looks fast. Felt fast, too. Hey, Randy. Hey was fast. That was a 131.58. 31? Last year I ran a 30. The thing is though, a minute 31 around this track, I mean, the only cars we've ever seen faster than that is that Viper and then two literal million dollar hypercars. So that's a hell of a time. I mean, really, you don't have anything to complain about. But I'm actually more curious about one of the muscle car comparisons, which is the BMW M4 GTS and the Shelby GT350R. Right? We don't think of BMW as making muscle cars, but these cars are really similar in their philosophies. And I wasn't sure which one's faster. So let's start with the BMW at one. Well, hang on a second. The BMW better be faster because I got money riding on this. Really? Yeah, a whole dollar. You know where I work. <laughs> I think it looks faster. It does look it a does. lot faster. I like but that it, flat flag is evil. All right, so it ran a 137.66. Respectable. Yeah. I can't tell you right now for sure which one was faster. Please the BMW. Please Man, y'all are tough. I'm going with the with the Shelby because it just sounded so cool. <laughs> you just cost him his whole paycheck. Oh. 136.11. All right, all right exactly. here's your dollar. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. However, <laughs> God, we have another bet going on the Japanese supercars. So. I took the Acura, Jason took Godzilla. Which one of these do you think was quicker? Well, let's see, that Godzilla is quicker than ever. It had great power. The NSX was a knife edge car. It was so quick if I got it right. And I think maybe the new hyper technology. We'll, we'll go with Godzilla first. And this is actually one of the slowest GTRs we've ever tested here. So it was, ran a 137.08. And the Acura up here at the top actually was quicker. So I get the dollar or my dollar back, it was a 136.36. So yeah, the uh, car with all the electric triumphs. motors was yeah. faster than Godzilla. Well, go figure, a mid-engine torque vectoring twin turbocharged V6 supercar is faster than Godzilla. Nine-year-old former supercar. And I'm out in my entire life savings, thanks to you. Give me that. Um, Jaguar. 
Here's an interesting thing. On the road, it was all over the place. Scary. Right? We should have been scared. As it turns out, one of the rear suspension links was loose. They took it away to Jaguar, they brought it back, and they fixed it. Loved the car. I'm so pleased. It just worked. Right. But here's, <laughs> the, here's the problem. This is 13875. This car is in really, really fast company. Yes. Also, where did you learn to write? Did I you should, stop I, at kindergarten? I should have been a doctor. <laughs> Man, we're just back here. We're doing the uh, MT BDC BBST. The what? Duh! The Motor Trend Best Driver's Car Best Backseat Test. <laughs> are, you, are you new? And, and why are we doing this test again? Because I thought it would be important. Also, the car with the worst backseat has got to be the best driver's car. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. All right, now kids, sit down, hold on, strap in, and shut. Oh wait, you can't shut up. Let's no, go. I've got Jason here. Ready? This is the new 911, but it ain't that base car. It's the Carrera S, so it's got two turbochargers, it's Miami blue, four-wheel steering, it's got PDK, PDCC, PASM, PSM, PVT Plus, and PVCC. Damn yeah. it, Johnny, PCCB. What's wrong and with I you? got a PP. <laughs> Hang on, corkscrew. Yeah, baby. Actually, this <laughs> Oh, that was different. That was really different. <laughs> the best roller coaster I've ever been on. Hang on, man. <laughs> you know, the 911's got plenty of weight in the back already. You guys have got to go. fan of every new Camaro I've tried so far, so I actually have high hopes for this Camaro 1LE. It's got a big fat V8 in it. It's got a manual transmission. Good old school driver involvement, three pedal, stick shift. I had steering response even in the middle of the corner. Very impressive. Oh yeah. Love the manly V8 rumble of this Camaro V8. Really great front end on this Camaro. It's got a little bit of oversteer, but it's very controllable oversteer, at least so far. You know, what Randy doesn't know is that that Camaro 1LE just ran a 137.77, which is amazing because the Z28, which was our 2014 best driver's car winner, ran a 137.82. The 1LE is 45,000 bucks. That Z28 was a $75,000 exotic. It had a hand-built seven liter V8. It had humongous, sticky racing compound tires and it had spool valve shocks. Those are the kind of things you find on F1 cars. Yeah, and it rode like an F1 car too. That's the thing about the 1LE. It has all the performance of that Z28, but it rides well, it's quiet, it doesn't scrape its chin spoiler everywhere. Like this is an actual fun car with tremendous capability. Yeah, I mean, I like it better than that Aston. I like nothing better than that Aston, but I, I am concerned it's gonna be the slowest car here. I'm certain it'll be the slowest car here. Better lockout. The ABS slides a lot, making me think that the ABS is not working, but it's just the slide. It has a very classic feel. And a kind of enjoyable balance. Big fat power band in the V12. It really feels like a rear drive in a good way. Randy makes 
for that Audi. I think he's gonna come back in, he's gonna like it, he's gonna complain about wrestling a little bit, there's some understeer, but he's gonna be very impressed by its capabilities. Capabilities for sure. Driving down the road, I kept thinking, if I had to rob a bank and escape, yeah. that's the car. It's so fast, it's so easy, it's deceiving. And part of that speed is that engine, a big part. I mean, you're talking over 600 horsepower from a naturally aspirated V10, <laughs> screaming in both ears, revs to hell and back. I mean, I just love that engine. Epic engine attached to an epic transmission. It may be the best automatic transmission I've ever experienced Yep. in any car yep. ever, yep. which is all the more impressive because Audi usually struggles to get that last couple percent right. Which is weird because Audi keeps winning Le Mans all the damn time. But speaking of manufacturers that can't get that last one to two percent right, McLaren. <laughs> McLaren 570S. I love the doors. 570 is for the horsepower. This car is fast. It really accelerates hard. It also has one of my favorite tendencies. It's a two-wheel drive that puts down power like a four-wheel drive. It has such good traction. McLaren has done a terrific job with that aspect of the car's handling. I would just like the rear to be a little more tied down in the entry phase, especially going downhill. It's a car that's rewarding in that it feels so fast, especially under power. That's when the McLaren's at its best. I have a question for you. McLaren, did they nail that last couple percent? 95%, yeah. 5% no. Yeah. Wow, oh, was a handful? Scary? It was it just a little too loose on entry. I had to be careful. Okay. Keeping it British, <clears throat> Jason's uh, love object here, this Aston Martin, there's something different about this number than all the other numbers. It has a heart. Get out of there. No, it's got a four. Everything else ran in the 130s. Slow old Aston Martin V12. 141, which is why they're replacing it next year. It's a classic time. It's a classic time. It's a fun time. Fun time, yeah. Right. Speaking of a car that was a good time but wasn't necessarily fun, Audi. The Audi was a handful on track. Second fastest car here, though. It made the time, but it was work. It, you know, it was understeering some. It was oversteering a lot sometimes. Speaking of a car that is both fast and fun and handles okay, check out this Camaro, 137.77. The pony cars are back. 45,000 bucks. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a value. Also, both fast and fun, the amazingly fixed by Magic AMG GTS yeah. laid down a hell of a time. We, we probably should that explain that, that uh, there was a gnome that showed up last night and fixed it while we were sleeping, and that's why you were able to do that. I still love it. I love that car. You know what I also macho love? German. I also love the Porsche 911. I mean, what a time for a car with not a lot of horsepower, but a trustworthy car, even in the back seat. On street tires. All right, all right, all right. We got a lot of cars here that are both fast and fun, but now comes the tough part of the competition. We have to narrow the field down. Oh man, that's gonna be tough. We all know which one I'm gonna pick. Holy shit. We went through a lot of tires. Make omelets, you gotta break eggs. So, I suppose I'm gonna sit here and listen to you make some sort of impassioned plea as to why your Aston Martin is our best driver's car. Nope. What? No. It's my favorite car. It's not the best driver's car here. Your sudden random burst of logic is freaking me out, man. Good. But let's bring my logic back into this. Let's do this in alphabetical order. Let's go through the list of cars and decide which shouldn't make it to the next round. And luckily, the next one in alphabetical order is the Acura NSX, which is the most logical and rational supercar ever. Yeah, and that's the problem because, you know, it just happens to be named NSX. There's nothing about that car that lets me know it's the successor to one of the most important sports cars of all time, right? And it doesn't really move the bar or raise the needle or, you know, either one of them. And it doesn't, it's not really all that much faster than a GTR. It doesn't drive all that well. So unfortunately, I think it doesn't make the cut. Yeah. And that leads us alphabetically to the Audi. And that's actually another ding against the Acura because now we have another $200,000 mid-engine supercar that 
kills the NSX in terms of performance. I, what an incredible piece of engineering to make a car that fast, that capable, and that completely passionless. Yeah, and the crazy part is, they make a better version of the R8. It's called the Lamborghini Huracan. Burn. Speaking of cars with $50,000 price premiums on them, the BMW M4 GTS. I think it's the best looking car here, but it just didn't blow my mind, either on the road or on the track. It's a bit of a one trick pony, right? It's a track car, but it wasn't great on the street. Orange wheels though, they're gorgeous. But speaking of ponies that were great on the street and on the track, the Camaro 1LE mind-blowing car. It's a little bit of a heartbreaker though because there's a better pony car here, but don't feel too bad for Chevy because next year they're coming back with a bigger, better, badder Camaro. And you know what isn't coming back next year? The Viper. Get him and the car out of here. I mean, look, the Viper is conclusive proof that just because a car is really fast around a racetrack, it's not necessarily enjoyable in any way. Look, the Viper's bandwidth is about that big, to say nothing about its owners. <laughs> but the, what a bandwidth, because look, Randy was a second and a half slower this time out in the Viper than he was last time we were at Laguna Seca with it, yet that thing is still three seconds faster lap than all these cars. Oh yeah. The ACR is an absolute monster, yep. but the problem with it is it's an absolute monster. <laughs> and there is, by the way, a way to have a caged monster in a car in a good way, and that's the Shelby GT350R. That thing is a rolling party on four wheels with an absolute monster of an engine. You know, the Shelby is covered in a layer of special sauce that makes it great to drive anywhere, bombing down the corkscrew or picking up your dry cleaning. I mean, that thing could be our best driver's car. Absolutely, and you know what could have been our best driver's car? That Jaguar, if it hadn't shown up broken like that. In moments of absolute brilliance peppered by broken suspension arms. Yeah, I mean, look, it's the curse of being British. They build cars we love and they don't work all the time. Right. But there is one British car, the McLaren, that showed up fully functional, remained fully functional, and all the while blew my mind. Yeah, but the thing is, Jason, I have never loved a McLaren. What? Until this car. I love that thing. It is amazing. Epic. That could be our best driver's car. Easy. That thing, the AMG, was in fact our best driver's car. And then it showed up this year, and no. It's still great. It ain't making the cut this year. However, it's coming back next year in a stronger form, the AMG GTR. Yes, and there's a Nissan here with those same initials, the Nissan GTR, and it's eight years old and it feels it. Yeah, I mean, look, the big picture is they added power, it's slower, Godzilla's going gray. See ya! <laughs> See ya, bye. And Porsche added power and made their car even better. Look, I never loved the 991 chassis 911 since it came out. They keep making all these improvements, and man, they're getting close to a perfect 911 now. I've always loved this generation of 911, and this is the best one yet. In fact, that thing could be our best driver's car. Absolutely. So we have our three finalists. Let's figure this out. Okay. Hey, mm. we're idiots. This is known, but why do you say that now? Well, because we have three finalists and there are only two of us. I think we need another host or something. Not if we just call the Porsche third place, voila, and jumped in the Shelby. Come on. Maybe we should go to quiet mode for the Zing car. What do you think? No! Your voice is loud. This may be the only car in the world that's actually louder than you. Fair enough. So anyways, this thing, man, the Shelby, totally reminds me of the Hellcat. What? Yeah, I mean, as I've said about the Hellcat previously, muscle cars suck. They look super cool. Everybody loves the way a muscle car looks. But the reality of them is, they don't stop, they don't turn, and they're not nearly as fast as advertised. The Hellcat was the first one to come along. It's got Brembo's. It can actually go around an autocross, and it has all the power there is. Likewise, when a 10-year-old looks at a Mustang, they don't care what it is, they just think it's this killer sports car. However, we know the truth, they're actually usually $20,000 V6 rental cars. This is the first Mustang that drives as good as a 10-year-old imagines it 
to be. It's a rare modern car in that it's special when you're not beating it up. It's special by virtue of the way it sounds, the way it looks, the way that engine revs, the power delivery, the shifter, the seats. I mean, all of it is just special. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, this ain't no consolation prize because we want to say something nice about Ford. <laughs> this thing is, you got BMWs, you got, you got Audis, you got Astons, you got, you know, GTRs. Look, if McLaren uh, had pulled a Lamborghini and Ferrari and just totally chickened out, this would be the best driver's car. Unquestionably. The only problem is I think that McLaren might be a little bit better. What are you gonna complain about now, Mr. I hate sunshine, puppy dogs, and supercars? That is patently untrue, Johnny. I hate everything, especially supercars. But while this thing may look like a supercar, it doesn't drive like one. This thing drives like a sports car. This is me, I'm having fun. And you notice that when the second you get in this car, the seat has no padding whatsoever, and yet it's completely comfortable. And look, we're not moving. Notice that we're not moving around because the seat was designed to keep a human in place while he's operating the most progressive throttle pedal in the world. This light, incredibly accurate, talkative steering. This is a riot. Part of it is beautifully progressive. This steering doesn't have any tricks to make it feel like there's quick turn in. If you want to turn in quick, uh, just turn the wheel. Like, oh my God. Easy, it's smooth, it's progressive, it's predictable. In fact, I would say it's beautiful. You would say that. Uh, in fact, I would say this is the 2016 best driver's car. You would say that. You wouldn't? Oh no, <laughs> I would say it too. Yeah, it totally In fact, is. I'm going to. Yeah. It is definitely yeah. winner, the best winner, 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 chicken, winner, chicken dinner. dinner. Woo! Well, there you have it the 2016 Motor Trend Best Driver's Car, the McLaren 570S. This group is the definition of amazing. We'd be happy to have each and every one of these cars in our own personal garages. And so would you. Well, no, not me, not the Viper. Regardless, point still stands. This is our most incredible collection of contenders to date. But when you have a competition, you're gonna have many losers and only one winner. McLaren was fabulous on the road, ferocious on the drag strip, and fantastic on the racetrack. It's easy to fall in love with a $200,000 supercar, but that's not why it won. It's because the McLaren, unlike any other car here, becomes a perfect extension of its driver. That's the very definition of a driver's car. Fast and fun. Congratulations, McLaren.